בעזרת השם נעשה ונצליח. מצווה גדולה להיות בשמחה, להיות בשמחה תמיד. מצווה גדולה להיות בשמחה, להיות בשמחה תמיד. איי איי איי, מצווה גדולה להיות בשמחה. מצווה גדולה להיות בשמחה, להיות בשמחה תמיד. Usually, we start the class with singing only one time a year. Misha, 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 right? That's last month. What are we doing on Nisan? It's stepping on Adar's toes. Is there an inyan to sing in Nisan? And not only that, about simcha, mitzvah gedola, liot besimcha, tamid. Tonight is a very, very interesting lesson. It's a lesson of building blocks. You're going to learn four different lessons separately, and then we're going to put them together like Lego. And at the end, you'll understand exactly why Nisan is connected to Yehuda, to Yehudim, and to the final Geula. And at the end also, you'll get a big, big, big master key to being a successful Jew. If you don't know how to succeed at being a Yehudi, tonight you'll get the master key. You can literally walk out this door and be a Ish Matzliach Ba'avudat Hashem. Be'ezat Hashem. Before we get started on this very interesting class, I'd like to give some honorable mentions and dedications to Yehudit Ben Shabbat. Thank you. I mean, you know, if you ever listen to these classes, it's a rewind. I keep saying the same thing. Because it's the same thing. She does a phenomenal job every time. The food. Did you see the chalot? Yeah. Did anyone oh. taste the chalot? Uh-huh. The food, the meat, the wine, the, 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 the ambiance, the, the effort that the Yudid Ben Shabbat does to learn Torah, to promote Torah, to host Torah. Eshet Chayel Mimza. So Be'ezat Hashem, Shashem, bless you Amen. with Amen. long life. Amen. Be'ezat Amen. 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 Hashem, you get Nachat Ruach from your children, Amen. from Noam Eli Melech, from Meir Asher, Amen. from... Uh, uh, from Shammai, and Be'ezat Hashem, you have a zivug hagud, mishor shishmatech, bimhera, bimhera, bimhera. And Be'ezat Hashem, that you should always be on the side of the given. And as we see, I mean, we're packed to the rims. We really have, like, no more room. We might just have to get the next door house, expand, <laughs> and, you know, grow this thing. It's already the second year, you know? So, besides that, I just want to give just a couple more dedications for the Iluni, that this class will be to the Iluni Shmat of David ben Zohara. Simon, Abraham Yoshua ben Sultana, Simon ben Alia, Mazal bat Luna, Meir ben Rebecca, and Sultana bat Frecha. Also, that this should be to the Refua Shelema, to Heleni, Orna, bat Chen, Chana. And Yaakov ben Dina. Refua Shelema, Yaakov ben Dina. Okay. Okay. So, let's go back to the question. What is the connection with the month of Nisan to Simcha? Well, before we can even like begin to understand it, I think it's very important to get some of the basics. I'm going to give you the basic tools, put them under your tool belt. You're going to need them for the rest of the lesson. Some basic facts about the month of Nisan. The word Nisan, the name of the month, comes from the word Nitsan. The word Nitsan comes from the word, in English means to bud, budding. Like a flower that's budding. Nisan, I, I don't know if there's any um, Syrians in the house, but the Syrians, how do they say Tzadik? Tzadik. How do you say Nitsan? They say Nisan, right? That Tzadik sounds like a summit, so it's exactly that. Nisan is the time where the trees are blooming. If you recall, a few months ago, what we were talking about, Tu Bishvat. What we are talking about, that the sap is going into the roots, going into the tree, going into the, uh, into the branches. And soon we're going to see little uh, buds coming out. It's when the life comes back into the earth. Nitzanim. The Nitzanim so see, here we are, similarly now, we actually are fast forwarding from Tu Bishvat. And what do we see? We see that the trees are budding. Now, and so because that's the season that the trees are budding, Nitsan, Nisan. 
So it's similar to what's going on in the world. Nevertheless, you should know that one of the biggest mitzvot that you can do is tomorrow. Or some people can even maybe do it tonight. I know you did. Uh, has some trees over here that you can bless on. We have Birkata Ilanot. If you guys don't know, this is a mitzvah that comes around once a year where we bless on the trees, but there's a condition. The trees need to be budding, they need to be two kinds, they have to be fruit-bearing trees. It's a very important mitzvah. And, and, and on a pshat level, it's good to pick it up just because for the mitzvah that is Birkata Ilanot. But on a deeper level, on a deeper level, Chazal tell us what's happening over here is that actually all the neshamot, all the souls, you know when, uh, before I go into it, you know, uh, when somebody passes away, we'd like to think that we put him in the ground and 12 months later, they're in heaven, right? We'd like to think. But what if it's not like that? We don't know. We don't know. Some souls, it doesn't finish after 12 months. Some souls, it goes on for another year, another decade, another century, who know, who know, maybe eternity. So what happens, those souls, they don't have their final tikkun. Every year when it comes to Birkata Ilanot, they line up in a special place over there and they start to chirp like birds. Metzaf tsefin they call them. And it's all those neshamot saying, there's nobody here to help us. Can somebody do a tikkun from my neshama? And believe it or not, our beracha on Birkata Ilanot is a tikkun for those neshamot. So how many neshamot, the religious, not religious, have somebody to do something for them, don't have something to do, to, the, something to do for them. Tomorrow, when you're going to do, or this entire month, you have the ability to do this mitzvah, get a Sephardic Sidur. In the back, it's about five to six pages. And just read it, even if you don't understand it. It talks about how to rescue these neshamot that are not able to do anything for themselves and take him to the next level. It's a mash, mamash chesed shelemed. What's a chesed shelemed? When a, a favor that you do to somebody and re- expect nothing in return. A dead person can do nothing for you. Done. It's a pure chesed. This is the mitzvah that's upon us. So you can see, Nisan, the month of Nisan comes from the word Nisan. Why? Because it's budding. What's happening? Pay attention to the first mitzvah. Birkat ilanot. Already over there, there's an avodah. You know, we've done a lot of classes where we dissected the month. Day by day, section by section. We went deep to it. Tonight is not that class. But I did just want to turn you on to a few things tonight that are connected to the month as well as um, the things that are available tonight, uh, this month. Furthermore, Another uh, fact that you might not know is that the month of Nisan is the first month of the year. As it says, HaChodesh Hazel Lachem Rosh Chodashim Rishon Hu Lachem Lechodshe Hashanah Welcome Rabbi. HaChodesh Hazel Lachem Rosh Chodashim This month the month of Nisan is the first month of the year. Rishon hu lachem shana. It's the first for all the months of the year. So right now, it's Rosh Hashanah. You might think it's Tishrei. I'm letting you know that according to the Torah, Rosh Hashanah is tonight. We'll get deeper into it. As a matter of fact, for those of you, Shalom Aleichem, Baruch Haba. In Megillat Esther, we just finished reading it, it even says about Nisan, Bachodesh HaRishon, Hu, Chodesh Nisan. So we see that the first month of the year is, biblically, is the month of Nisan. Also, it's the month where the Jewish people got out of Egypt. So a month that the Jewish people related to, that was connected to them as Jews was Nisan. Meaning all the months, that the, all the years that they were in Galut, in Mitzrayim, in, a, in, a, in an environment that had nothing to do with Judaism, they followed whatever calendar that they had over there. But as soon as they got out and they started to be Jewish, Jews, something had to define them. And one of the things that defines us as Jews is definitely the calendar. We are governed by time. That's for sure. When we pray, when we... Uh, when we um, uh, 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 the holidays, Shabbat, Chagib, every when we fast, when we, we open up the fast, so many different things are connected to, to time. Even today, three minutes before Rosh Chodesh, we're rushing to get something in that is for Erev uh, Nisan. So we see we're governed by time. 
Nevertheless, but because that this was the first month that the Jewish people became Jews, it becomes the first month of the year. Furthermore, Chodesh Nisan in the Torah is called and Chodesh Ha'aviv. Why is it called Chodesh Ha'aviv? Because, again, Pshat, it's spring. Because it's spring, it's the month of spring. <coughs> but in reality, it's letting us know that Chodesh Aviv, or even Pesach, that's called Chag Aviv. If you take the word Aviv and cut it into two, it becomes Av Yudbet, the father of twelve. Nisan is the father of the twelve months. So we see that over here is the Rosh Hashanah La Chodeshim. Furthermore, maybe something you didn't know, but anybody who learns the uh, Gemara has uh, a little bit of an insight on this next thing that Rosh Chodesh Nisan is Rosh Hashanah Lamelachim. It's also the head of the year for the kings. Meaning what? When there are kings in the time of the Tanakh and they would rule, how would you count their years of rulership? It would, st it would start by how many times Nisan overlap. Like, so for example, if a king came into power in Adar, and now one month passed, and now it's Nisan, how many years is he in power? One, one, one month or one year? One year. 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 This is why it's called Rosh Hashanah La Melachim. Every time Nisan loops around, it becomes a year, regardless of how many months before it, when we count the years of the Melachim. Another example, when the time of Bet HaMikdash, we had Turumot and Davot. When a person would go to Bet HaMikdash and have to make some sort of a, a donation, he has a certain time to bring it. So how much time does he have to bring it? So he has 12 months. How? 12 months from where? From the Nisan, uh, the previous Nisan. So we see that there's, uh, there's a few things that are connected to Nisan that we might have not have known. They're a little technical, but they're very important. Now, what is the connection of the month of Nisan to Simcha? So, let's start tonight's lesson with the names of the month. With the Yudke Vavke name of the month. Mm. So, for those of you that have been in this class before, you know that we've already dabbled with this concept that God's name of Yudke Vavke, if you boggle it, you can come up with 12 different combinations of how Yudke Vavke can, uh, can, be, uh, uh, can be boggled. Right? It can be put together. And God's name of Yudke Vavke has a special name for each month. And if you know that special name for each month, then you're able to fulfill what the Arizal taught us. I'll share it with you. The Arizal says, Bekol Rosh Chodesh tzichim lekaven bemusaf besiyum haberecha em tzayid siruf havaya hasholetet boto Chodesh. The Arizal says, when you get to Musaf, and when you get to Baruch Ata Hashem, Mekadesh Israel Virashe Chodashim, there, stop. That Yudke Vavke that's in the Biracha, instead of just having the regular Yudke Vavke, go and look in the chart that shows you what's the Yudke Vavke for Adar, for Nisan, for Tishrei, for Adar Bet. Good, nobody it. knows. No. Tishrei doesn't have one. Adar Bet is what? All 13. Uh, that's for you, Rabbi. <laughs> I know you'd appreciate that. So every single month has a Yudke Vavke. And Vavkein. The Ariza says, if you know God's name for the month, what happens? In Midrash Tehilim it says, There's a Midrash that says, they ask, the Jewish people are praying and they're not getting answered. Why? What's the reason that the Jews pray and they're not getting answered? It says because they don't know to pray and mention God's name as, it's, as we learn it from this Pasuk in Tehilim. So if you go to the 91st uh, chapter of Tehilim, Tehilim Sadiq Aleph, it says over there at the end, I will uplift him because he knows my name. He'll call me, I'll answer him. Who doesn't want this? I want this like now. I want tomorrow if I can make this happen, I want it. How? All you have to know is when you go to Musab, you say Baruch Hashem. Oh, what's the Yud Kevavke to Nisan? What is it? 
Because if I if I if I have the kavana of the yud kevavke for the son, what happens? I'll be mekayim the pasuk. Asagevel ki adashemi ikre any veneil. Now you know this is so. What, what we try to do every single month is we try to understand first of all reveal what is the yud kevavke name of the month and what is the hidden meaning behind it. So. This one is the easiest one out of all of them. <coughs> Nisan, since it's the first month of the year, the order of God's name for the year is exactly Yud, He, and Vav, and He. Easy. So already tomorrow, you're on pro level. You go into Musaf, you already know how to activate God's name for the month. Baruch Atah Hashem, in your mind, Yud, and He, and Vav, and He. That's it. And now, open up your heart, start to Hashem, Hashem, calling out your name. Answer me. I know your name for the month. There's a pasuk, Midrash Tehilim. I want to be Mekayim. I want to get connected. I want to get plugged in. Chazal also help us out. Because sometimes God's name could be not Yud Kei which is so simple. It could be uh, Yud and He and He and Vav. Uh, how are you going to remember that? And you might get a month where it's Hey and hey and yud and vav. Or vav and yud and hey and... How are you going to remember it? So in order to make it easier, they also give us a part of a pasuk. They give us a part of a pasuk. Like for example, if you want to remember the God's name of yud ke vav ke for Nisan, they say, Yismechu HaShamayim V'tagel HaAretz. Yismechu HaShamayim V'tagel HaAretz. Yud, hey, vav and hey. And later on, there's other. Every single month, there's a different one. So, if Chazal want us to remember Ismechu Hashamay v'Tagel Haaretz, right there already, there's two words that are screaming out happiness. Ismechu, that's Simcha, and then there's v'Tagel, that's Gila. So certainly, there's something connected to happiness in the month of Nisan. Shalom, Yaakov. There's, I have a chart that shows another name, Aleph, Hey, Yud, Hey. Yes, Ekiah. You also have that. Can you also, do you also have to do with that one? Or? Yes, yes. But for tonight's lesson, I'm only teaching Yud, Kei, Vav, Kei. Because if we go to Ekiah, it's a whole other lesson. I'm only going to give it a few minutes. But you're right. As a matter of fact, for anybody that wants this chart that he was speaking about, Rav uh, Yora Michael Abergel Zatzal, who uh, has the, the Siduri, Korina Bishua, all his Sidurim have this. Uh, sometimes after the class, I snap a picture of this and I post it on the chat. If you're not on the chat, join the chat so I can share this with you. It's worth buying this Sidur. If you don't have the Sidur, print out what I gave you and keep it in your Sidur for once a month that you have it. Now. I sent it on the group. You might. Now let's get started. With God's name for the month. Ismechu HaShamayim V'tagel HaAretz. First of all, I want right now a Hebrew dikduk lesson. I want to understand what is Simcha and what is Gila. Because we know that the Hebrew language is so rich. It's so rich that every single word has a different meaning to it. Like we said, I think in our previous class, but I'll say it again just for reference. For example, in Simcha Torah, what do you say? Sisu V'simchu V'simcha Torah. What's Sisu? What's Sisu? And what's Simchu? What's Sason and what's Simcha? So Sisu V'simchu V'simcha Torah. Sason is the happiness you get when you complete something. Simcha is when you start something. So what do we do in Simcha Torah? We have Sason that we finish the whole Torah. And Simcha, because we're starting it again. That's for Simcha Torah. Here, we have another thing. Simcha and Gila. So I want to know what those two words mean. So it's interesting because we have the Malbim that chimes in over here and says that Simcha is a heat midit. Simcha is a joy that a person experiences constantly. It's a constant uh, happiness. Gila is something that is renewed. Meaning Simcha is that you're constantly happy about something that is tamid uh, midi. And then Gila is when something new comes up. Ah, so you have Simcha and Gila. Furthermore, he gives us a little bit more in order to understand this concept. He says, Hashamayim po'alim tamid lifi sidura mativ'i. 
המתמיד והם ישמחו תמיד. So, so what's one thing that you can be uh, happy about constantly? That nature always works the same way. The sun always comes out. The moon always comes out. The world is always turning. There's certain things that we can rely on to be constant. We can be happy that they're constant. And that is nature. And and how do you get to Gila? What is the Itchachut that comes? He says, when something other than nature comes into the world, that gives you the Gila. So what is something that is constant? Simcha. Something that renews itself in this world is Gila. So let's see a little bit deeper. The Malbim says, Simcha bedavar t'midi. He says, you know what's the happiness you get out of something that is constant? You know what's constant in a Jew's life? Torah learning. When you're learning Torah, you're constantly in a state of joy. Simcha comes from Torah learning. Ve'agil, hu bedavar mitchadesh. The gila that a Jew gets in his life is something that's going to renew. There's one thing that we're so waiting for over and over and over. This new reality of... Mashiach. Mashiach. <laughs> Soon. Mashiach. Soon. The Gila comes from Mashiach. So let's go back again. Ismechu Hashamayim v'tagel ha'aret. Ismechu, the simcha that the Shamayim gets, is when we learn Torah. That's the constant in our life. The Gila that's going to be ba'aret is when Mashiach comes. That's the new happiness that we're going to get when Mashiach comes. Furthermore, We've just understood that Gila, that Simcha, is something steady, and that's our Torah learning. Gila is something renewed, and that's the Geula that's coming. That's the, 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 the Chidush in the world that we're waiting for, the Mashiach. So we see that there is a Simcha that's associated with Nisan. Why? Because our redemption, us becoming a nation, the Simcha that we had of the journey to Matan Torah, and the simcha of the future redemption, Amen. 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 all happened during Nisan. You might not know this, but Nisan is not only the beginning of the year, but it's also considered the month of Geula. Meaning we just gave all these things out of reference that we know is got, that happened in the past, which is all the things that connect to, the, uh, to Nisan is the new year. But Nisan has an added bonus. Something that's going to happen in the future. This is the month that we're going to see Mashiach. This is the month that we're going to have the Geula. As a matter of fact, there's a beautiful, beautiful Chazal that talks about it. It says, Chodesh Nisan hu ha-chodesh shebo nigalu b'nei Yisrael, ubo atidim le-igael. The month of Nisan is when we were redeemed, and in the future, we'll be redeemed in this month as well. So Yetziat Mitzrayim, the Exodus, splitting of the sea, going into the desert, all that happened in the month of Nisan. Mashiach and the story that comes along with him is also going to happen in the month of Nisan. As a matter of fact, one of the titles that we have for the holiday of, of Pesach is, we call it Lel Shimurim. What does Lel Shimurim mean? Well, many explanations. One explanation, it's the night that there's a, an overall protection. Nobody can touch us on the day. Lel Shimurim, we're completely protected by God. However, over here, Lel Shimurim, it's also like, a, 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 the word Shimur is Lishmor. Hashem kept this, reserved this night for us, or the reserved this month for us, for throughout the ages. What's Lel Shimurim? Ma Shamar Hashem, what did Hashem keep for us? Shem, huh? No, no, something else. This is Lel Shimurim. Then there's a chidush. Lel Shimurim. Why is it called Lel Shimurim? Shavu asa gedola letzadikim keshem shasal yisrael b'mitzrayim. The same time that the Jewish people got out of Egypt, that same day also was a day that many, many, many salvations happened. Boit zil chizkiyahu. Boit zil chananiyah bechaverav. Boit zil Daniel migo v'arayot. Ubo Mashiach ve'liyahu midgalin. This night is reserved 
reserved for us to get salvation. We mentioned, he mentioned over here, Hiskiah, uh, Hananiah, Daniel from the den of lions. But know that on the Saturday night is when we're supposed to have Mashiach and Eliyahu reveal themselves. Furthermore, the same way that Kadosh Baruch Hu saved the Jewish people from Egypt and redeemed the Jewish people from Egypt, Ibelel Pesach, is the same way that he saved all these uh, righteous individuals throughout history. And in the future, La'atid Lavo, this is such a big claim because I thought you can't uh, say, you know, you can't uh, uh, pinpoint a day or time the Mashiach is coming. But it's incredible because Hazal are revealing to us that it's, it's, it's not a secret. It's Lel Shimurim. We have a track record that, this, that there were more uh, salvations during that day and soon to be our ultimate salvation. Also brought in Pirkei Derbi Eliezer, Amar Ifka Yaakov. Beni, Halayla Hazeh, which was Lel Pesach. We know that the whole thing that happened over there with the blessings was in the uh, in, in Pesach. Otsarot Malachim Niftachim Bo. He says the night of Pesach, that's the night that the, the, the halls of, the, uh, of, of all the angels and all the kings, I'm sorry, the halls of the kings open up. <laughs> the upper worlds begin to sing to God. <laughs> he says, this is the night that your nation, your children, is supposed to be redeemed from slavery. And that's what happened in, uh, in, Pe- in, uh, in Mitzrayim when they got out in the night of Pesach. And this is the night that they're in the future, they're predestined to say a, 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 a song to God for redeeming them as well. As a matter of fact, everything that I said, you have to believe. Because the 13 principles of faith, there are 13 things that if you don't check every single box, you got to check your Judaism. Or you got to strengthen yourself. Either or. There are 13 things that you must believe. One of them is It's a famous song. Nevertheless, you have to understand that Mashiach is coming. When? Okay, so we got a couple of uh, Midrashim that opened it up for us. Let's Shimurim. Rivka talking to Yaakov about this night, unbelievable. Gives us like kohot to be excited about Nisan, to be excited about the energy, the spiritual energy that's available to us this month. But nevertheless, we have to under, we have to sort of like rebrand uh, uh, Nisan. Yeah, Nisan is the first of the month, and it's the first of the uh, first of the year for the months, and it's also for how we count for the kings and how we count for the Trumot. But one thing that maybe we're not too sensitive to is that this is the month where it all goes down. This is the month where the Mashiach comes. This is the month where there's the, the Geulah comes. Sometimes we expect it in different times. Focus, Nisan is the month. Furthermore, in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, there's actually a very famous Machloket that I know you guys are thinking, but I'm going to uh, say it out loud for you. Maybe some of you are scratching your head because we all know that Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year. Yes. Not Nisan. The, the, the Goli, Goli year. So, so, so how is it possible? Year. How is it that the whole world is doing Rosh Hashanah in Tishrei and now you got one guy in, in Miami telling you, no, 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 we're switching everything around that it's going to be in Nisan. You have to challenge me. It goes against what you do every single year since the day you were born. Rosh Hashanah is... No, Tishrei. Oh, you're good. What a good student. Right away. He's already, he's already there. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah, we all know, is in Tishrei. Now, Nisan, we're saying, is also Rosh Hashanah. So what could it be? So we're going to learn a beautiful Gemara, not too deep on the surface. Masechet Rosh Hashanah. On the 11th page, on the first side, it says, There's a famous machloket between Rabbi Eliezer 
and Rabbi Yoshua. Matai nivra haolam. When was the world created? Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Betishre nivra haolam. Rabbi Yoshua Omer, Omer, Benisa nivra haolam. So now we got two rabbis. One rabbi says that the world got created on Tishrei. That's Rabbi Eliezer. And Rabbi Yoshua says in Nisan. Now, the Sfat Emet uh, shares something with us that is really, really incredible. He says, Tishrei is Rosh Hashanah l'shanim. Nisan is Rosh Hashanah l'chodashim. So already we have a small distinction that's a big difference. Rosh Hashanah, it's right. It's Rosh Hashanah when we count years. But what we say that uh, Nisan is? Av Yudbet. He's the father of the months. So one is for the years, the other one's for the months. Furthermore, the Sfatimit says, Tishrei Rosh Hashanah l'shanim hu itchatshut hashana al pider chateva. That's when the world renews itself every single year by way of nature. Ubenisan, as we learned, Rosh Hashanah Lamlachim, it's the head of the year for kings, Lemalchei Yisrael, the kings of uh, of Israel. And then he brings a beautiful, beautiful Gemara. He says, Vehainu, Bnei Yisrael shinikreu Bnei Melachim, shem Bnei Chori mishibud asitracha shenam tachat teva. He says, then you know why Nisan is connected to, uh, to, to the Jewish people? And why it's their new year? It's because it's, it's uh, connected things that are above nature. <coughs> Tishrei is the beginning of a new year. <laughs> Nisan is Shana Chadasha Lachodashim Ledvarim Shemaal Hateva. In other words, to summarize, Olam Hateva. Anything that has to do with nature is decided on Tishrei. Anything that's above nature is decided in Nisan. Is not the Tubishvat? No. was two months ago, full class. <laughs> I can't go into it, at the end I'll answer. So here we are. We're starting to now peel away the, you know, peel the, the layers of the onion. Tishrei is the head of the year for things of nature. Nisan is head of the months for things that are above nature. Let's continue. It says, this hitchachut by way of nature, that's something that is not connected to the Jewish people. This, this renewal that happens on Tishrei, it's a renewal by nature for the entire planet, except the Jewish people. Nisan, who Rosh Hashanah leitchatshut, ma'alach shel nisim, leitchatshut zo miyuchedet rak la'am Yisrael. Nisan is the reset button to all the miracles that are going to happen to the Jewish people for the year. Start to get connected to Nisan. It's a very exclusive month for the Jewish people. What Hashem does for the entire world, as it says, everybody on that day, on Rosh Hashanah, every single person on planet, every living creature gets judged on that day. That's, what, that's the program for Rosh Hashanah. That's the program for Tishrei. That's the program for things by way of nature. Six months later comes the month of Nisan. Hashem says, let's press the reset button and let's set up all the miracles that are available exclusively to the Jewish people. So this is all great, a new year, a time for renewal, opportunity for miracles, opportunity for redemption, above nature energies, wow, we should bottle this. If we could get whatever we're talking about right now, we'd be like millionaires. But in order to activate all these things that we're saying, because I don't want it to be like we're selling big things, but it's not practical, something that you can't do right now, that you can't do tomorrow. In order to activate all this above nature things that we're talking about, in order to tap into this renewal, to renew yourself, first you have to know yourself. You need to know who you are. Do you know who you are? 
In order to renew yourself, in order to become a better version of yourself, who are you? So I'm going to give a, a, a general answer that will be befitting to everybody in the room. Ani Yehudi. I'm a Jew. Now, it's so generic that you might be okay with the first great understanding of what a Jew means. That Ani Yehudi, yeah, my, my Ima was Jewish, my father was Jewish, in bare minimum, my Ima was Jewish. I'm Jewish, Ani Yehudi. I was born in Israel, I have a history. Well, everybody in their <coughs> definition of Yehudi. But what we're learning tonight is, the, is how to tap into what's available exclusively to Jews. So in order to tap into it, you have to be a real Jew. What's a real Jew? Do you think you're a real Jew? Above and beyond the checked box that you were born a Jew. Are you acting like a Jew? Are you thinking like a Jew? Are you living like a Jew? Are you even able to tap into the things that are available to Jews? Let's see. First of all, let's define what is a Yehudi. As a matter of fact, did you ever think about why we are called Yehudim? And also, you know, with, with this big question of how to renew yourself as a Jew, a Yehudi, and why we're Yehudi, how is it even connected to the month of Nisan? Because keep in mind, we're in a Rosh Chodesh class. So everything has to get tied into the month. We can't go off tangents and talk about 10 different things. We're going to always tie it in to what we're talking about tonight, which is Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh says you can renew yourself. And not only that, you can tap into new miracles that are exclusive to Jews that come to life in, in, in the, right now. We're minutes into it. Hashem already renewed all the miracles for the Jews. Okay, I want my share. I want my share. You want your share. Who doesn't want, need a miracle? A nes bedeh chateva. Because that's how they come. Miracles by way of nature. Who doesn't want one? It's a miracle to find a wife. It's a miracle to find Parnassa. It's a miracle to stay healthy. It's a miracle to, to find parking next to your deeds house. <laughs> need miracles. So, so what is a Yehudi? And how is it connected to the month of Nisan? So I would say, since we got out of Egypt, in the month of Nisan, and that's when we became Jewish, so that, that's the connection to Nisan and Yehudi. Ah, Chazak. One plus one equals two. But the truth is, we have to think a little bit deeper on it because when we got out of Egypt, we became B'nai Israel. So why don't we call Israeli? That's our national title. They call us Israelis because of the land of Israel. It's a national title. But as a nation, we're Yehudim. So how come when we got out of Egypt when we became Jewish, why are we called, we're called B'nai Yehudim? Why are we called B'nai Israel? Why are we called Israeli? Why are we not... Why are we called today Yehudim? So, our true essence is in our name of Yehudim. I'm going to take you on a, on a small little journey about Yehuda and Yehudim. We'll come back in a little bit to Rosh uh, Chodesh, but first, it's very important that we understand the following. The name of the Jewish people, the Jewish nation, who's Ha'am Ha'yehudi. We are called the Jewish nation, Ha'am Ha'yehudi. And it, we are named after Yehuda. And why are we named Yehuda? As it says, Enkulus brings it, Yehuda, ata yoducha achicha. It says, Yehuda, your, 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 your brothers are going to praise you. And why... Why is it that he got this uh, blessing? Yehuda was a very special individual. All the tribes were special. But we're not called Zebulunim, we're not called Binyaminim, we're not called uh, Gadiim, we're not called and anybody else. Even though that every single Shevet had a unique attribute, for some reason, whatever Yehuda stood for defines us as a people. We were called Yehudim after, because of Yehuda. And what was the first thing? About Yehuda, Shehuda velo bosh b'maseh Tamar. He made a mistake in his life. He made a mistake with Tamar, and when they confronted him with him, you know what he says? He admitted it. He right away admitted it. He took the uh, ownership over the mistake, and he was willing to st to stand the punishment for it. He didn't do the classic. He told me, she fooled me. It was because of him. I didn't know. Nothing. They told me you did something wrong. I did it. 
He owned up to it. From the word hoda'a, to admit. Furthermore, Targum Yonatan says uh, in Aramaic, I'll explain it in Hebrew. It says that because he admitted over what happened to him with Tamal, because of that, begin can lecha Yehudun achach bitkayun Yehudain al Shemach. Sheklal Yisrael nikra Shemo Yehudim because he admitted. Now, this 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 uh, this tagline of Yehudim, we also saw. I'm just going to mention because it's still fresh in our mind. Megillat Esther. How do you say about Mordechai? Ish Yehudi. Out of all the things to call Mordechai, he was a you know was a chief rabbi. He was in the Sanhedrin. He was a, you know like a, what are you, so many things that the cousin of uh, or the daughter of uh, Esther uh, maybe he was a high official in the army of uh, of, of Achashverosh. So many titles you should give him. But what's the thing that they want us to know that defines him? Ish Yehudi Haya Why would it be so important to mention that he's Ish Yehudi? He says, "V'amai kara le-Yehudi." Why was Mordechai famously known? Like the tagline that they put on him is Yehudi, al shem shekafar ba'avodat kochavim. He was against idolatry, and kol hakofer ba'avodat kochavim nikra Yehudi. Any person that goes against idolatry is considered a Jew. Meaning, if you're a Jew and you're not against idolatry, you pacify it. That's ah, okay. No, no, there's not. There's something wrong with idolatry. You have to be against it as a Jew. And Mordechai was completely against it. As we see that the whole, uh, all the people of Shushan bowed down to Haman, except for who? Except for who? Mordechai. Because he, he wasn't scared. He killed, you want to kill me? Kill me. You know, what do you want to do? Do whatever you want to do. I'm not bowing down. The Torah says there's no bowing down to idols. Ah, this guy's a Yehudi. All the Yehudim act like this. Ube Midrash Rabbah, it says, Lefishi yichet shemo shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu kenedi kol be'olam, why is he called Yehudi? Because he was the one, the only one, Yehudi, the only one in Shushan that stood up to this danger. He stood up to the face of danger, stood up to the guy who's implementing, enforcing this whole uh, law to his face and says, I'm not bowing down to you. Ah, this is like Abraham Avinu energy. It says, the one, me against the world. Only Yehudi has that guts to stand up to someone. And, 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 uh, Mordechai displayed that. Chazal tell us, Yehudi, ze adam hama'amin b'ashem itbarach b'msirut nefesh. You know what's Yehudi? Yehudi, definition, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a Jew that's willing to die for God. Yehudi is a person that has msirut nefesh, a person who's fully dedicated, who's fully focused to do anything and everything necessary to please God. Mesirut nefesh. Even if it's mesirut nefesh. Even if it means giving his life away, that makes you a Yehudi. When you have mesirut nefesh, you get the title of Yehudi. So when I said, you know who you are? Ani Yehudi. Are you? Probably. According to his definition, are you living a life that you're willing to die for? Look how off we are. Look how off we are the mark of the true definition of a Jew. And as a matter of fact, if you take a look at the Torah, it's a collection of Mesirut Nefesh stories. Every single story. So many stories could have been, so many uh, uh, things could have been included in the Chumash. Yet, if you look into it, you just dig a little bit under it, you see that the guy was willing to die. For this, this guy was with uh, Abraham, willing to die, willing to uh, uh, shecht his son, for Kadosh Baruch Hu. Yitzchak, willing to get shechted, for Kadosh Baruch Hu. You, uh, and every say, I have a whole list coming up, I'm going to share with you, I don't want to jump into it. But when you have Mesirut Nefesh, you have the title of a Yehudi. So we stop right here, and I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it, because I'm, with, I'm not talking from up top, I'm with you, I'm also... I don't know if I'm a Mesut Nefesh guy either. I don't know if you're willing to die. We, you know, in theory, in theory we say it. Well, when it comes down to it, who knows? Who knows if we'll have the guts to die for Kadosh Baruch Hu? But we see that this Mesut Nefesh is very, very far from the life that we're living. We're not living a Mesut Nefesh life. I hate to say it. Do you see what the Arabs are doing? 
they die for they die for God. Of course, on the side of Tum'ah, of course, for the wrong things. But there's an example in the world, on the complete side. We're, we're the example of Kedusha of Mesirut Nefesh. They're the example of Tum'ah of Mesirut Nefesh. So all I'm saying is, they're showing us how there could be a reality where you're willing to die for God for the side of good, not for the side of bad. Chas v'shalom, we should learn nothing from them. But they do have Mesirut Nefesh. As a matter of fact, Hazal tell us, and I've saw it brought many, many times, and I remember even Ayavi Sarah Bejir shared it to us one time in the class, he said, this Mesirut Nefesh is not just exclusive to religion, by the way. If you have Mesirut Nefesh on anything, you'll succeed. If you're all in 100% on anything, eventually you'll succeed. Because that is a power, it's like a law in nature, that when you are 100% fully dedicated, focused on something, you'll succeed there. We'll continue. To Masechet Brachot, a very interesting Gemara. It says, Rav Papa asks Abaye, Madu al Rishonim hayu mitrachim nesim veinu lanu lo. Imagine these Tanaic rabbis; they're having a conversation. So, so imagine us. We're like hundreds and hundreds of years later, and we're asking this question now. But look what they're asking. It says, Why is it that the Rishonim, to the ones before us, they saw open miracles. We don't see miracles. Imagine, Rav Papa asking Abaye this. How come they have miracles and we don't? Abaye answers him. He says, he gave him a beautiful answer. He says, Arishonim, you know why they had Nisim? Because they had Mesirut Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem. Us? We don't have Mesut Nefesh and Kiddush Hashem. That's why we don't see miracles. So let's put into focus. We just said that this, this is the month of miracles. The month that the, the heavens and the earth are lined up. This is the month like there was a, the, the, the first Geula. It's going to be like the final Geula. Everything is available to us. So we ask, so why isn't it happening? Where's my miracle? Where's our miracle? Abaya and Papa were talking about the exact same thing. How come we don't have miracles? He gave him a straight answer, a smack in the face. You don't have Mesirut Nefesh. Those guys had Mesirut Nefesh. Miracles happen to them every Monday and Tuesday. The, the generation that has no Mesirut Nefesh, blind in the dark. Where, where's Hashem? Where, where's my Yeshua? Where's my, where's my Panasa? Where's my Zivug? Where's my, where's my help? Uh, yeah, there's no Mesirut Nefesh. A Jew living without Mesirut Nefesh, you're, uh, it's, like a, uh, it's like a Ferrari. You know Ferrari? Yes. That you're driving it your entire life in first gear. <laughs> you know Ferrari? <laughs> you can take it, you can take it to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth gear. Rabbi Shimshon Pinkis was using this about tefillah. He used that example in his book about tefillah. He says, people don't know the power of tefillah. I'm going to use his uh, analogy here. You don't know the power of a Jew. You're a Ferrari in first gear your entire life. Let it rip. Open it up to two, three, four, five, go. You have power. The thing is, you're not activating your power. Why? Because you're living a life with no Mesirut Nefesh. With no self-sacrifice. You're not living a life that you're willing to die for. You're 50-50. I'm 50% Jewish, 50% uh, mix. Whatever I see on TV and on my phone. That doesn't work. Eliyahu Navi. I'm going to share with you later what he said about this, uh, this approach to life. Furthermore, I want to give you some examples. Biblical examples of Mesirut Nefesh. It says, I'll take you from the beginning. Every single day, Every single day, you open up the Siddur, what's the opening line? What's the opening act? What's the first thing that we do when we pray? What's the first thing? Akedat Yitzchak. Akedat Yitzchak. What's the sort of Akedat Yitzchak? Surprise! Mesirut Nefesh. What happened over there? Abraham is willing to take the only child that he was waiting for, for a hundred years. The one that the Jewish nation is supposed to come out of. And he puts him on an altar at the age of 37. And he's ready to shift him. Why? Mesirut Nefesh. Hashem said, whatever Hashem says, I do. Yitzhak, his son. 
could have said, Abba, this is your challenge, not me, keep me out of it. Or he could have said, you know what, uh, I refuse, I can turn around. Mesirut nefesh, he says, Abba, tie me up good, so I don't move, make me a good kosher, shechita. Mesirut nefesh, willing to die for Kadosh Baruch Hu. Every single morning we remind ourselves in the Sidurim where we come from, what's our heritage, who is our... Who is not our, our Saba, our Saba Rabba, Saba Rabba, 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 it all comes from Abraham. Who is Abraham? Look at his DNA. You, you come from that. How close are you to Abraham? How close are you to Yitzchak? Furthermore, Rabbi Soloveitchik says something incredible in regards to Akedat Yitzchak. He says, you know, there's two mountains that we are very familiar with. Har Sinai and Har Amoriyah. He says, why wasn't Bet HaMikdash built on Har Sinai? That's a good question. If we got the Torah on Har Sinai, it would have been appropriate to maybe build the Bet HaMikdash on Har Sinai as well. And we come there three times a year into the desert, and then we visit it. If we, or maybe it becomes part of Israel, whatever, I will figure it out. We could have lived, I'm sorry, we could have built Bet HaMikdash on Har Sinai. That's what the Torah was given. No... You know where you build Bet HaMikdash? On top of Har Moriah. You know why? Because over there there was Mesirut Nefesh. That's where Abraham wanted to shift his son Yitzchak. The Mesirut Nefesh that was embedded in that place, that's where Hashem says Bet HaMikdash. Har Sinai lost to Har Moriah because Har Moriah, Mesirut Nefesh was over there. In Har Sinai there was a Mesirut Nefesh. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yerim Etahar He says uh, he forced him to take the Torah, as it says over there. He says, no, over there there's a Mesirut Nefesh. Here was a Mesirut Nefesh. Nice. Furthermore, it says that the Yehudim are called after Yehuda because he admitted on the Maaseh Tamar, which is a Mesirut Nefesh, and a person that was in his status, in his stature, the embarrassment that comes from that, and yet he fought it, and this is, it, it, he fought it, and he admitted it, and he accepted it, and this is the essence of the Jew. Mahut Ama Yehudi, Mesirut Nefesh Al Kedushat Shemo Barach. Yehuda showed us, in order to, be, to, to, uh, to glorify the name of God in the world, whatever it takes, even if it's embarrassing, if, if, even if it's death, for Kedush Hashem, you do it. And because Yehuda was the first example of how a Yehudi should be willing to give up his life for Kedush Hashem, we're called after him. Furthermore, it says something else about uh, Mordechai, but I'll skip, we'll go to the next one. The Gemara, in Masechet Sota, on the 36th page, on the, first, on the second side, says, uh, on the second side says, Yehuda, my he, they, they try to go deeper and understand Yehuda. Yehuda, my he, when we try to understand Yehuda, what is it? Detanya, Hayar bi Meir Omer, Kshamdu Yisrael Ayam, Hayu Shvatim Menatchim Zeim Zeh. Zeh Omer, Ani Oret Echila Layam, Vezeh Omer, Ani Oret Echila Layam. Says that in the time of the Exodus, right before Yitzhak Mitzrayim, right before the sea split, the the tribes were fighting with each other. I'm going to go first. No, I'm going to go first. No, I'm going. They're they're fighting. Kafat Shivto Shel Binyamin Veira Dam Techila. The tribe of Binyamin went into the water. And I wanted to go into the water first. As it says in Tehilim, Sham Binyamin Tsa'i Rodem. Al Tikei Rodem, Ela Red Yam. The Binyamin went down to the ocean. Vayu Sarei Yehuda Rogmim Oto. And the, 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 the people from the tribe of Yehuda were throwing stones on him. Amru lo, Rebi Yehuda, lo kachaya ma'aseh. Ela, ze omer, en ani yore techila la yam, ve ze omer, en ani yore techila la yam. So comes a, a different opinion, says, no, this is not how it happened. It happened like this. Each one used to say, no, I'm not going to be the first one to go in. And the other one says, no, I'm not going to be the first one to go in. Comes Nachshon ben Aminadab, the prince of the tribe of Yehuda, and he jumps into the water first. And he merited to be a king that from his tribe will be a kings will come from it in Israel. Kol Nes Yamsuf, the whole miracle of the splitting of the sea, 
בסל מסירות נפשו של נחשון בן אמינדב. The splitting of the sea happened because of נחשון אמינדב's מסירות נפש. Let's try to visualize it. You have פרעה ורוכביו, 600 chariots, and you hear the behind you, the noise, right? You can't go right, you can't go left. left danger to the right and danger to the left. There's no way to go. There's just an ocean. There's no way to go. They ask Moshe, what should we do? Moshe says, Hashem says, walk. Who walks into an ocean? Who walks into an ocean? Nobody walks into an ocean. Why? It's a death sentence. You walk into an ocean, at one point when the water passes your nose, you die. Nachshon ben Emiadah says, Hashem said, walk. I walk. Mesirut nefesh. He walks, he walks, he walks, he comes, the water comes to his knees, comes to his belly, comes to his chest, comes to his nose, and comes the faint in this line. He gives mayim ad nafesh. He tells HaKadosh Baruch Hashem, I did all that's humanly possible. If I go one more step, the water goes over my nose and I die. So this is where you step in. I did my max, you take over. The sea split. That type of mesirut nefesh. When you do the maximum, the most that's humanly possible, you married to a kriyat yamsuf. You married to your own personal yetziat mitzayim, and that's why we're called Yehudim, because that's what defines us. When we're willing to do everything that's humanly possible, and then we're able to activate these miracles that are floating in the air right now. That Hashem just press reset on the whole miracles of the entire year. How become a mesirut nefesh Jew? Do the maximum that you can as that's humanly possible, and then Hashem, Hashem. Tag, you're it. Take over. That's it. I made every phone call. I, I went through every appointment. I went to every doctor. I, I, I did every tefillah. I gave every tzedakah. I said, I did the most. With a full heart. With a clean heart. Hashem uh, knows, right? And then, a person sees miracles. Furthermore, it says that the whole thing of Yitziat Mitzayim was on a Mesirut Nefesh of the beginning and the end. It was a two-parter, the Mesirut Nefesh. The first Mesirut Nefesh was all the Jewish people in Mitzrayim. What happened? In order for them to get out of Mitzrayim, they needed, they were naked of mitzvot. Nothing. There was nothing. They were on the 49th level of Tum'ah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I have no zechut for you. I have no merit to take you out of Mitzrayim. As a matter of fact, when they came out of Egypt in front of the ocean, what did the ministering angel of the ocean say? I can't tell between an Egyptian and a Jew. My, 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 uh, my condition that was made during Sheshat Yemei Bereshit is that there's going to be a Jew, a Yehudi, in front of me. And, he, and I guess the, the ministering angel thought what a Yehudi is supposed to look like. And for that, I'll, I'll go against nature. For that, I'll split the sea. But when he saw that there's no difference between the Jew and the Egyptian, he started to give a hard time. He's like, no, I'm, you know, I'm not going to split for these guys. So this was their reality before they got out of Egypt. So Kadosh Baruch Hu says, look, in order for you to merit Yitziat Mitzrayim, you got to pick up two mitzvot. One is Korban Pesach, two is Brit Milah. Brit Milah, could you imagine, at all the different ages, that they have to do a Brit Milah before they go to a 40 year in the desert. Imagine. You know what's the third day after Brit Milah for an adult? The guy can't move. It's, it's, it's surgery. Everybody did it. And the blood that was from the Korban Pesach and the blood from the Brit Milah was mixed together and put on the doors. And that's how Hashem skipped over the houses with the blood that was made from that Mesirut Nefesh. As a matter of fact, the other Mesirut Nefesh, in my opinion, is even bigger. Why? For 210 years, they are living in Egypt and they are slave nation. One day they get up and they stop working and they take the god of the Egyptians, a lamb, and they take him and they tie the lamb to their bedpost for three days. All of Egypt is hearing, meh, 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 meh. They say, what is this? Our god? They go, they knock on the doors, they see the Jews, and they see over there, their lamb. Oh, and they say, you know, they, maybe they bow down to it over there, who knows what they did. And then they come to the Jews, what are you doing? He says, we're tying up your God to our bedpost. Why? Because Hashem told us we're going to shecht it in three days from now. And then what you're going to do? We're going to put it on the barbecue. 
You know how much courage you need to have mm -hmm. to do that? That the Egyptians don't turn and revolt and, and, and just murder every single Jew for doing that? That was Mesirut Nefesh. They didn't care. You want to kill us? Kill us. This is what Hashem said. That's what we're doing. So the Mesirut Nefesh of the Jews in Yitziat Mitzrayim, that they tied the God of the Egyptians to the bedpost and shefted it. And the Brit Milah that they did right before going to Yitzhak Mitzrayim, that was the first Mesirut Nefesh. Part two was the Nachshon ben Aminadav when he got into the water. And that was the whole beginning and end of Yitziat Mitzrayim. Once the ocean closed, then Am Yisrael already started a new life. But how did they become a nation? What was the birth of Am Yisrael? The Mesirut Nefesh in Mitzrayim and the Mesirut Nefesh of Nachshon ben Aminadab in the splitting of the sea. Every single month has a, has a, um, a tribe that's connected to it. Just like there's, we've mentioned this in previous classes, every single month has a special uh, name of Yudke Vavke. There's also a special stone. There's also a, a special, uh, the tribe that is connected to it. There's also a special body part. There's also special letters. There's also special uh, uh, attributes that we have to work on. Many different things that are available to work on during the month of Nisan. We don't always mention everything. We pick and choose the things that are relevant to the class. Please guess which tribe is connected to the month of Nisan. You guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be weird if it was a Bulun, no? <laughs> okay. It says, Ibnay Saskar, from Mamare Chodesh Nisan, Mamar Aleph. Vine Bereshit Omer Lechaliot, Chodesh Azehu Mech Lachodashim. Chodesh Azeh Lachem, Rosh Chodashim. This month is the month that is the head of all the months. Alken who Rosh Hashanah Lamnachim, because it's the head of all the months, that's why it's also called the head of the uh, years for the kings. Vaapi said that Gali Machodesh Azeh Meashech Shiach Liuda. This month is connected to Yuda. Shimimenu Chotera Malchut. So remember, we said that the months are connected to the Malachim. Yehuda is connected to Malchut. So you see already the connection. <coughs> But look what he says over here. He says unbelievable. He says Achodesh Azeh Lachem. If you take the word lachem, it spells out the word melech. Achodesh hazeh, melech. Who's connected to kingdom? Yehuda. What's the king of the months? Nisan. We see now that the pieces are starting to, to connect. And since this is the month of, 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 of Yehuda, who's teaching us how to be a Yehudi? Yehuda. And why are we called Yehudim? Because Yehuda is Mesirut Nefesh, and of course of the Avot as well, but in general, The essence of Yehuda, because he had, he was the, the paradigm of Mesirut Nefesh Jew. They said, all Jews be like that. All Jews have Mesirut Nefesh. What defines a Jew is his Mesirut Nefesh towards the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Let's stop again. How close or how far are you from being a Yehudi now? It's okay if you're very far away. The journey begins tonight. It's okay if you're close, Baruch Hashem, then this is a chizuk for you. But for me, this was a slap in the face. Because it's so hard to read these words, to see the life that our tzaddikim uh, live, to see that there's all these amazing miracles available to us. And it's like, so far away, I can't, I can't grab it, I can't touch it. I can't, why can't I bring all these beautiful things into my life? This connection to God, this, this, this service to Hashem, living a life of Mesirut Nefesh, To being able to, to pray to God and get answered. Why? Because we're so far away from, from the true essence of a Jew. Mebul Balim. We're very, very confused. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there's a very famous, there's a very famous Haftarah where Eliyahu Navi rebukes the Jewish people. And he tells them, how long, how long are you going to play both sides? How long are you going to be? Choose a side. If it's with the Baal, go with the Baal. If it's with the Kadosh Baruch Hu, go with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Whoever is your God, go with your God. But don't be 50-50. 
We're too much 50-50 Jews. Excuse me? Give us some credit. 50% credit. Failing great. Huh? It's failing great. What are you going to do? 50% is failing. What are you going to do? Got to pass. Like I said, I ask, I ask each one to ask themselves personally what Mesirut Nefesh level you're on. Grade yourself. If you're 100, Hazaku Baruch. I'm, you know, I can tell for a lot of people that I speak to, they're very, very far from li living a Mesirut Nefesh uh, lifestyle. By any means, or even having a mindset like that. So we could all be very soft and. You know, pat, pat everybody down because it's Dor Halash. Tonight, I'm not taking that approach. I usually take it every single night. And, mm -hmm. and, and I don't mind uh, cuddling people back to Kadosh Baruch Hu. We all need it. Everybody's soft. But every once in a while, I need a smack in the face. This class is a smack in the face. It's to, to wake you up. How far are you from the, from the point? Nevertheless, even if we take a look at, uh, at you know, I want to wake us up to another uh, concept about this whole thing of Ma'ala Teva. You know, every time you say Ma'ala Teva, you get so excited. Oh, I can activate things that are above nature. That's so appealing. It's so interesting. I want that. I want to activate things that are above, above nature. You know, we'll call it magic, right? But I don't want magic. Magic is Sitracha, it's the dark side. I want the Ma'ala Teva of Kadosh Baruch Hu, Ma'ala Teva of Kedusha. How do you activate it? As a matter of fact, another layer to uh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, as we just learned in the parasha, which, which parasha did we read? The Shabbat? Shemini. How does it begin? Parasha Shemini begins. Vayi bayom Shemini. So stop right there. What's the eighth day? Above. So number eight is always above nature. Hazak. But if you, what's the date of the eighth day? Rosh Chodesh Nisan. The day that the Mishkan was erected was on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. But Rosh Chodesh Nisan is also called Yom Hashemini. The day that's above nature. Because the above nature energy is here. Ismechu HaShamayim V'tagel Ha'ayt When the heavens and the earth line up, that starts from day one. That's why it's called Bayom HaShemini. Know that this Rosh Chodesh Nisan is the beginning of things that are above nature. As we said, Tishrei is all the things that are connected to Teva, the rest of the world. Nisan is everything that's Me'ala Teva, Shemini, Me'ala Teva, exclusive to Am Yisrael. So if that's the fact, I want to understand a little bit better about this Me'ala Teva day. What's so special about it? Especially since we, we just read the parasha. This will give us some background to what we're learning tonight. This Yom HaShemini that we just read, it's a moment in time that's 2,448 years in the making. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, He created the world with the, uh, with the purpose of having, or with the intention of having, Dira Batachtonim. That he can reside in the high heavens and here below the same way. It's the same thing. Whether Hashem is in the seventh heaven or if he's here in, 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 on planet earth, it's the same thing. The problem is that this original plan got foiled. Because seven different things, and seven different events in the world push God away from from his dwelling place in this world. And it happened on day one. Day one. As soon as he created man, man sinned. And when, when Adam HaRishon sinned, Hashem right away went from here to the first Rekiah. There's seven Rekiim, seven heavens. And each time there was a, a, an event that pushed us that pushed HaKadosh Baruch Hu away further and further and further and further away from us, further and further from the original plan of the Rabbah Tachtonim. So first was Adam Rishon. For, from first to second was Dor Enosh, the first generation to do idol worship. After Dor Enosh was the generation of the flood, Noah, Dor Mabur. Then it was Dor Palaga, Tower of Babylon. After that, it was Sdom Va'amura. After Sdom Va'amura, it was Mitzrayim, and, the, and during the time of Abraham, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is now 
in the seven heavens, the farthest it can be away from us. Comes Abraham Avinu, and he says, I'm going to start the tikkun. How can we? Hashem created this world so he can reside amongst us, and now he's the furthest away. So Abraham Avinu started the tikkun. And now started the process of bringing Akadosh Baruch Hu from the seventh heavens to reside in this world. So then it was Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Levi, Kehat, Amram, Moshe. Those seven tzaddikim were able to bring Hashem from the seventh to the sixth, from the sixth to the fifth, from the fifth to the fourth, from the third to the second, from the second to the first, and from the first Hekia to the Mishkan, Bayom Hashemini, a day that's above nature. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, His Holy Presence is going to come on Rosh Chodesh Nisan and finally come back to the first day of existence, 2,448 years later, in the Mishkan. To have a reality where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is residing amongst us. Remember we said... Simcha ve'gila. What's simcha? Simcha is the Jewish people learning Torah. There was a big, big simcha in the world because finally, when Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave the Torah to Am Yisrael, what's happening? There's a simcha in the world. Why? Finally, the whole world got created for what? For the Jewish people to learn Torah. So when the Torah was given to the Jewish people, now they're learning this simcha, this gila of Mashiach coming. That's something that one experienced. Later on, because why? The same thing that happened 2,448 years after existence of the Shekhinah came down to the Mishkan. What do you think the time of Mashiach is? The time of Mashiach is when we're able to bring God's holy presence, the Shekhinah, back to where? To Yerushalayim, Beit HaMikdash, Kodesh HaKodashim, right between the Keruvim, Hashem's holy, uh, holy uh, Shekhinah is going to reside over there. So the same thing that we, it's, that we just read about in Parashat Shemini, that's what we're waiting for. That's what we're waiting for, for it to come back. And that's a moment that's be above nature. So you want that moment that's above nature? Then you have to plug into Nisan. That's a month, month of things that are ma'ala teva. And they're connected to what? To everything that can make that moment possible, which is also the final geula. Because what we say, lesh himurim. Oh, you want the final geula? Plug into the month that's able to do it. Remember what Rivka said, that this is going to be the, 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 the month and the day where the, the, the Mashiach is going to come for your children. So we keep thinking about Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. Start to connect the dots. What happened? Hashem wanted to be here all the time. We lost it. In the Mishkan it came back. We lost it again. We're trying to get it back again. When is it going to be? It's going to be in the time of Third Beit HaMikdash, in the time of Mashiach. When is that going to happen? When you become a Mesirut Nefesh Jew and take advantage of Nisan. That's how it happens. We might be doing a lot of different things to bring Mashiach. But are you doing that? The classic formula. The classic Jewish formula. Mesirut Nefesh. Another beautiful part right here. It says, Ha'olam nivra bishvil shnei dvarim. The world got created for two things. Ha'torah v'Yisrael. This whole world that you see, that we live in, Hashem went to the whole painstaking effort of creating the cosmos, the oceans, the trees, the animals, the birds, the humans, everything in it, everything that you see on every single level for two things. That the Jewish people will learn Torah in this world. Did you know that? No. And if you knew that, are you doing your share? Are you doing your part of it? Because we're always, always so focused on why our things are the way they are, why things are so bad, why things are so tough. Because we're so off the mark on our, on, on our work. We are called the chosen people. Not because we're special and better than other people. That's, uh, that's another warped way of thinking. It's not because we're special, we're chosen. Uh, look at me, I'm better than you. No. We were chosen for a role. We were hired. I chose you to do a job. Hashem hired us. How many of us are doing the work? You got hired for a job, to be a light onto the nations. To take the book, to take the, 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 the Torah and live it out. Be a walking Sefer Torah on planet Earth. Are you that? If not, 
then what were you chosen for? That's the role of a Jew. Ha'olam nivra bishvil shnei dvarim. Ha'torah and Israel, that's it, that's you. We're a couple. Furthermore, this, this whole class was actually just an introduction to this final point. We needed all these layers and all these little blocks of learning to just now piece them all together for this final, final piece. It's connected to the holiday. It's connected to Nisan. It's something brought from the Netivot Shalom. Something incredible. It says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu called Am Yisrael Beni Bechori Yisrael. Imagine, the creator of this world picked you, picked you and says, you my son, you my daughter. You know how special you are? I always say it's like people have a winning Powerball ticket in their pocket and they're not cashing it in. You know that guy that's won a billion dollars? You're better than him. You're better than him. Cash your Powerball ticket. Cash in as a Jew. Be a Jew. You don't know what's waiting. There's no number that can, that can, that, that can equate to the Sahar in Olam Abba. Not that we do things for Sahar, but for those people that need the motivation, that there's a reward system. There's a reward system. But just the fact that Hashem chose you, the creator of the world, Melech Malchei Amalachim, chose you to be his son and his daughter. You know what that is? You're part of the royal family. Beni Bechori said. And you know, anybody who's a parent and has children, al kol peshaim You know, children, at the end of the day, no matter what they do, we let them slide. We, you know, love covers a lot of the wrongdoings of other people. Love blinds. As a matter of fact, the Kadosh Baruch Hu wants to redeem us. That even in the way that we're so filthy, and we are so connected to the Goyish lifestyle, yet we're still yearning for the Geula. Does Hashem come for the 50-50 Jew? Does Hashem come for that Jew that is confused, that he wants to be connected, that he wants Mashiach, but yet he's totally in, 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 you know, in, in embedded in, uh, in, uh, in Goyish society? It says... In in uh, in uh, in uh, Shira Shirim, it says that Kadosh Baruch Hu medaleg al ha'arim. Hashem skips on the mountains. What does it mean medaleg al ha'arim? She geulat mitzayim aytab chinat dilu. He said, look at the way Kadosh Baruch Hu took us out of Egypt. It's like he skipped. That what? She Kadosh Baruch Hu dileg al ha'seder shuat pi midat adin vegaala bemidat ahava bechinat beni bechur Yisrael. We know that Kadosh Baruch Hu rules the world <coughs> with, with, with first with deen with judgment and then with kindness and mercy when it came to Yetziat Mitzayim Hashem says I'm putting deen on the side and I'm going straight into chesed he says I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over the deen that usually is my first approach and then the chesed I'm going straight chesed why? because Bani Bechawi said when you're on the 49th level of Tum'ah, and when you're so confused, and you're not even uh, worthy, you're not even worthy of being redeemed, I'm still going to get you. Why? Because Bani Bechori, love blinds, and Hashem loves us. It says, This is the big, big reveal of the month of Nisan. That in the month of Nisan, That Hashem began to love us, Without Midat Adin. When did that happen? When did Hashem forego on strict judgment and approach us and deal with us only with love? In Mitzrayim. When? Yetziat Mitzrayim. When? Nisan. What month are we in? Nisan. 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 So you should know, we said this in many different classes, I'll bring it again. Don't look at the year as, as a linear line, as if it's... Year 1, year 10, year 100, year 1000, year 5000, as if like the years are going over us. The year actually is a cyclical year. It's 365 days that are constantly looping. And what happens is, as things happen on a certain day, 
there's, a, there's an impression on that day. Meaning, if there are certain things that happen on that day, we are able to tap into them and draw that spiritual energy from them. For example, the classic example that I give all the time, the Jewish people sinned with the golden calf on Yud Zayn Tammuz. And then we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgave them on Yud Betishe. Yud Betishe is famously known as Yom HaKippurim. Because that's the day that Hashem forgave the Jewish people. There's the measure of forgiveness embedded in that day. That's why on that day, we all go to shul, bang on our chests and say, For Aviti Hatiti Pashati, forgive me Hashem. Why? Because it's the day of forgiveness. Yom HaKippurim. That day, the energy of that day is Yom HaKippurim. It's not Yom Ava. It's not the day for Shidduchim. Right? And it's not the day for, uh, for Parnassah. It's the day for forgiveness. Similarly is Nisan. What happened on Nisan? Nisan, the entire month, was the month that the Jewish people had God's love towards them. And He redeemed them. He took them out of Mitzrayim. So every time Nisan loops around, what do we have? God's love for the Jewish people. That He puts away the deen and He looks straight into Ahava, into Chesed. And He helps us out. He gets us out of our personal Mitzrayim. And the potential to get us out of our collective mitzvah, out of the galut, and into Eretz Yisrael, is always available. But first we have to do it collectively, and then b'achdut we get there as well. So since this energy is available, ha'chodesh hazeh lachem, rosh chodashim, rishon hu, lekol chodesh ha'shana. Or Chaim HaKadosh says about this pasuk, she'chodesh zeh mufcha she'bachodashim. Or Chaim HaKadosh says that this is the best month of the year. You ready for the for this huge claim? You gotta have the shoulders of our Orachim Hakadosh to say this. Ki bechodesh ze yechol yudi ledaleg leavato shalashem itbarach leila b'matzavu madagato. Doesn't matter which level you're on. Less than fifty percent. Less than fifty percent doesn't even matter. You can skip whatever uh, situation you're in and get into a much higher level with Kadosh Baruch Hu. Vafilu meshuka gvav bemem kachare tuma. You could be as low. As the 59th level of Tum'ah, just like the Jewish people in the time of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. And Hashem will forego that, will not look at that, but will activate His love and mercy towards you to take you out of your personal Mitzrayim. Or to take us out collectively of our collective Mitzrayim that we're going through. Could you imagine what's going on here in, in Nisan? But you have to know this and you have to activate it and you have to connect to it. If you don't come to this class, or if you don't read the books, or if you don't look into it, tomorrow is just another Tuesday. But tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Yom HaShemini. Me'al HaTeva. Medaleg Aleharim. What activates it? According to this, nothing. The Mesirut Nefesh, of course, that is your, that, that's your, your master key to, to getting all this. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that, if, all, if you're on the 49th level, just come with ratzon. Just come with the desire to want to become better. Just the desire to want to get redeemed and Hashem will do it for you. Whatever you want to achieve in the entire year can be achieved on a much higher level in this Month alone. Furthermore, he says, Hashla Kadosh. By the way, for those of you that did the Shla prayer right before, there's a big prayer. It was a mitzvah to do a, a prayer of Hashla Kadosh for Parnasam. And Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Some people fast before, some people give tzedakah before. Nevertheless, Hashla Kadosh will mention him again uh, in tonight as well. The whole month is the energy of today. Everything that we're talking about, usually we try to take advantage of the one or two days of the beginning of the month, is available the entire month. And that's why, halachically, in the, times of, of, uh, in the times of Nisan, we don't do Tachanun, we don't fast, we don't eulogize. And, and the, the reason why we don't, we don't do that is because this, the month of Nisan, And we're not allowed to lafil kol tsar We shouldn't even activate anything that has to do with tsar during this month. 
Why? Shebechodesh Zeh Mitoer Tigvat Hageulah. This is the month that it awakens the 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 the, the hope for redemption. And Moreh Tigshe Asimcha, and it awakens the 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 emotions of joy and happiness. So just like Rosh Chodesh has an effect on the entire month, and just like Nisan, Rosh Chodesh, is for the entire month, and it says that Rosh Chodeshim lekol lechodesh ha'shana, ha'chodesh azer lechem Rosh Chodeshim yishonu lekol chodesh ha'shana. This entire month, you're able to draw from this month for the entire year. If you do the proper work. During this month, you can draw it all into the other years, uh, 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 all the other months of the year. Which brings me to the first lesson that we had here so many uh, a, a year ago when we had the comparison between Adar and Elul and uh, and Tishrei and Nisan, how they're also parallel in their energies to Shuvah Me'ava, Shuvah Me'ira, and all the things that are connected to it. Uh, this is anybody who knows that lesson understands this on a much higher level. Lastly. The final geula will be like the first geula, as we say in the Musaf of Shabbat. What are we saying over there? That Hashem is going to redeem us at the end. Acharit in the end, kereshit, like in Mitzrayim, like the first time. So just like Hashem redeemed us in Nisan, He's going to redeem us again in Nisan. It says. Nisan, מכיוון שהרת הגאולה מאז גאולת מצרים נשארת תמיד בתקופה, just like we said, that spirit, that, 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 that spiral, that year, it says just like Nisan was the month where they got redeemed, that spiritual energy is embedded in that month, and it's available to us in every single year, והזמן מוכשר לגאולה, as if the month of Nisan is prepared, it's primed for גאולה, meaning that the, in the calendar, if there's ever a time, give me a time in the calendar that's ideal for redemption. The whole month of Nisan is ready. He says, I'm primed, I'm ready. I'm just waiting for you. <laughs> and that's why we wait for it, even if we're not ready for it. Why? Because just like the Jewish people were not ready for it, they were on the 49th level, level of Tum'ah, and they still got the Geulah. Us too, even if we're not ready for it, we're also going to be ready for it because the same thing that happened to them can happen to us. That's why it says, He says, even if it's going to take too long, don't give up because are we worse than them? Are we worse than the 49th Lord of Tumah? Maybe we are. Actually, the Arizal says that in the Igvita de Mashiach, we're going to be in the 50th level of Tumah. And we know that we're in the Igvita de Mashiach. So what's the difference? 49th level of Tumah, they said, get them out quickly, otherwise there's no way out after 49th level. So if we're on the 50th level, we're the point of no return. Comes the Arizal and says, no. That was the generation before they received the Torah. A generation, the, the people that have the Torah can go to the 50th and get out of it. So we could even be, according to the Arizal, to the 50th level of Tumah and still get out of it because we have the power of the Torah to get us out of it. And even if we're not deserving, the Hashem's love towards us during this month can bring it to a point that we can be redeemed even when we're not deserving. Why? Because there's a measure of love that's happening here with the Kadosh Baruch. Nevertheless, finally, it says, "Benisan nigalu u'benisan atidim liGael, be'eze matzav shehem nimtzaim af imenam ruim liGael." The Tivot Shalom says that they are going to that the future generation, us, us, the ones that are not even worthy. To be, uh, to be redeemed, are going to be redeemed on this month. Why? Because in this month, you can't underestimate the, the amount of love that Hashem has for the Jewish people. And when Hashem's love gets aroused, gets awakened during this month, it puts us in, in, in a prime position, an auspicious position to be redeemed like the Jews in Egypt. And this is the secret of the redemption. Even your personal redemption or our collective redemption. All of us, all of us can get out of our restrictions, can get out of our personal mitzvah in this month. How? 
על ידי התעוררות האהבה המיוחדת לעם ישראל, המתגלית בחודש הזה. Through the love that הקדוש ברוך הוא has for us, that awakens itself in this month. I want to take you to the Amidah, to the first Amidah, <coughs> to the first section of the Amidah. You might not have not paid attention to it. Look what it says. ומביא גואל לבנה ביניהם למען שמו באהבה. You surely understand that line way differently now than you did before the class started. That Hashem is going to bring a redeemer for his namesake and why? Be'ahava. Be'ahava, they're so bad. They, they misbehave. They don't listen to your ways. Why? Be'ahava. There's going to be another misa. Hashem puts the deen, the deen away. All he cares about is the awakening his love for the Jewish people. He did it before. He'll do it again. And that's why the month of Nisan is, in the, is an auspicious month for the Geulah. Because God deals with us Be'ahava. So in conclusion, the Mes- uh, never forget the power of a Yehudi. We asked ourselves, who am I? A Yehudi. And we said, what's the true definition of a Yehudi? We learned it from Yehuda. As well as many other figures from Jewish history. But I'm going to focus on Yehuda. The Mesirut Nefesh yields miracles. And specifically for the Jewish people. And specifically through the month of Nisan. The Jews were redeemed in Nisan and they're meant to be redeemed in Nisan again. How? Through our self-sacrifice, through Mesut Nefesh. And the Mesut Nefesh is through our uh, dedication to Torah, Torah learning, Torah, mitzvot, ma'asim tovim. And even if we don't, with this strong, we, we just give our strong commitment to God and God's love brings forward this redemption. Not to fail, I'm going to put a side note over here, a point that we didn't bring, but I can tell you, we can't give a Torah lesson without mentioning unity. The Hadut of Am Yisrael is our secret. That's what's going to, give us, that's what's going to bring us to, uh, to the final Geulah. Don't think that you're going to be super righteous and you're going to be you know, locked up in the room by yourself. Mashiach is coming for you. If we're not all united, if we don't know how to get along, how to respect one another, how to live with one another, then Mashiach is not coming for lone wolves. He's coming for all Am Yisrael. So unity is another strong point that's going to bring the Mashiach. And a Yehudi is somebody who's emulating Yehuda. In Yehudit's house. In the month of Nisan. And <laughs> my birthday, And your birthday. 29 of Nisan. Mazal Tov, Mazal connected to Simcha, when a Jew gets out of their personal Mitzrayim, when, a, when the Jews get out of their collective Mitzrayim and live a life through their Jewish identity, a Yehudi with Mesirut Nefesh to Hashem, we merit to the final Geulah, which is the ultimate goal of existence, the Simcha of the earth and the heavens lining up. And this is why the name of the month is Ismechu HaShamay V'tagel Ha'aretz, because that is the ultimate purpose of existence for a Jew living a Jewish life. Shashem v'ech otchem v'sameach otchem. See you next month. Amen. Sharon, you mentioned, you mentioned 49 level of Tumah. How it works? Remember we talked about 50 level, 49 level of Nushat, it's like bucket, and 50 yes. is ocean, but Truma probably, uh, Truma work uh, opposite it's way, like, yes? Uh, 49, uh, 49 is ocean. You don't have to get out. Uh-huh. Good to see you. Yes, sure. <laughs>